So every year at Apple's developer conference, they announce new versions of iOS, and this year was no difference. And every year when they announce it, they have this thing that they call the word wall, which is all of the features that they couldn't include in their big keynote announcement. Let's watch that. Did you blink? Because if you did, you missed it. There are so many features in iOS 11 that there was no time for Apple to go through them all, and there's no time for us to go through them all right now. But we are going to go through my favorite features in iOS 11 on both the iPhone and the iPad, which is a much bigger deal. Let's take a look. So here's iOS 11. It is a standard grid of apps like you expect, but if you swipe up to Control Center, you see it looks totally different. You can directly adjust things. You can force touch things to get more information and more control. What you can't do, unfortunately, is directly access Wi-Fi networks by long pressing on that, which is a real bummer. But the Apple TV remote widget is great. You can get right to it from the lock screen. It's way more convenient than digging through for the app. Now, if you swipe down, you get the new notification area, which has basically been combined with the lock screen. You've got your widgets over here, you've got your camera over there, and if you swipe up a little bit, you'll get your earlier notifications that you've already seen. So that's all great, but what I find annoying is you can't swipe away notifications anymore. You have to individually force touch each one and dismiss it or reply to it or act on it. It's pretty annoying to have to deal with them like that. So Siri has actually gotten way better in iOS 11. And the first thing you're gonna notice is that it sounds way more natural when you ask it a question. What's the weather? Okay, here's the weather for today. That sounds like a human being, actually, which is pretty impressive. Siri can also translate to a few different languages. So for example, translate, help, my screen is cracked. How do I get it fixed into Spanish? Ayuda que mi pantalla esté rota. ¿Cómo puedo arreglarlo? Yeah, that's really useful. So there's new camera options, there's new filters that are a little bit more natural than what we had before. But my favorite thing is when you have live photos, there's new stuff you can do here. So here on this photo of Tyler, I can switch to a bounce mode, which has him swinging back and forth, which is amazing. You can also set a key photo to any moment in the live photo if you didn't like your exact shot. Last but not least, and maybe most importantly, the iPhone now stores photos and videos in a new file format that takes up less space. So if you have an iPhone without a ton of storage, this is gonna be a big win for you. But don't worry, when you share them out, they still get shared as standard JPEGs or movie files. So that's most of the big stuff on the iPhone, but the really big changes are coming for the iPad where the user interface is completely different. So I really wanna take a look at that. But you should know that some of the things I'm gonna show you on the iPad also apply on the iPhone. Now the way that you interact with apps on iOS 11 is very, very different than what you did in iOS 10. There's all kinds of new modes for split view and multitasking and slide over. It's kind of crazy, so let's get into it. So the first thing you'll notice on the iPad home screen is I have this massive dock on the bottom with almost as many apps as you could possibly want. And you can open up apps as normal, but what's new is you can swipe up from the bottom a little bit and get the dock back and open up another app. Or if you want, you can swipe up and then drag an app out into a slide over mode that hovers over the window or you can do a traditional split screen mode. And what's great is you can actually resize it on both sides. And if you really want, you can even bring a third app, just hover it over the middle here, and you get a third app in a slide over mode. And you can even dismiss it and bring it back whenever you want. So you've got a bunch of options for getting multiple windows up on your iPad screen. Now, if instead of swiping a little, you swipe all the way up, you get an app switcher, which is really interesting. You've got your grid of apps over here, you got your control center on the right, but if you look closely, you'll notice that the apps are grouped together in the split views that we set up. So here is music and Tweetbot, and I can swipe over and go back to this other split view that I had saved before. Basically, you've got a million different ways that you can organize all of your app windows on the iPad, and it's super fun to play around with. Now, I have to admit, I don't think that this is quite as intuitive as a standard window system where you've got a mouse and a keyboard and you move stuff around, but that wouldn't work on an iPad. And I have to give Apple credit for putting a lot of thought into this multitasking system because once you get used to it, it really works. Now, I haven't even gotten to the part about iOS 11 that has nerds like me the most excited. It's drag and drop, and especially on the iPad, it's bonkers. So let's show you some drag and drop stuff. Now, you can do the stuff you'd expect. So if you're in a split view, you can take a link drag it over into the Notes app and have the link populate there. But where things get really interesting is when you want to drag multiple things. So for example, in the Photos app here, I can start dragging this photo, but then use my other hand to add more photos to the things that I'm dragging. And now I've got this object and I want to put it somewhere, and I can swipe up the dock, I can go to the home screen, I can open up a text messaging app or whatever, but where I want to put this stuff is the all new Files app, which I am incredibly excited about. So I can just throw this on my desktop 
and now they're just going to show up on my Mac's desktop when they sync over. Now this Files app is also awesome because in addition to the iCloud Drive stuff, which is what you'd expect, they're also going to be adding support for Google Drive and Dropbox. That's all coming. There's also recent files. And the reason all of this matters is you're going to be able to have apps and have them have access to photos and files and all sorts of other stuff without having to deal with the usual hoops you used to have to jump through with the share sheet in iOS. That is not a thing we've been able to easily do on an iPad before, and it means that making this thing your main device is going to be a lot easier now. iOS 11 also makes way better use of the Apple Pencil. And there's a lot of stuff you can do now that you couldn't do before. Now, if you have an Apple Pencil, you can double tap the lock screen and you can immediately start taking a note without unlocking your device. This will get saved, and if I want to search for it later, Apple does OCR on the screen, and that word will get recognized. But, you know, honestly, one of my favorite features in iOS 11 is the new screenshot. So on both the iPad and the iPhone, you take a screenshot, it puts this little dude down in the corner. You can swipe it away, or you can open it and immediately start annotating it. So you can crop it down to just the section that you want, and you can, you know, draw your little arrow, draw your little smiley face, and then share it out, save it, do whatever you want with it. This works for screenshots. You can do it with web pages, saving them as PDFs and noting them up. And you can also do it with emails. There's one new feature in the Notes app that I'm really impressed with. It's document scanning. So in the note-taking app, if I've got a document that I need to fill out, I can just scan the document. I've got it here at a crazy angle. It uses AR Kit, which is this new feature, to figure out exactly how it should be straight. So I'll just save it, look at my scan. It's nice and straight, and then I can immediately start annotating it and filling it out before I send it off to get my subscription to this magazine. It's really impressive. We've been going for a while now, but there's a bunch of other little features on iOS 11 that I really want to mention. So on the iPad, there's a new feature on the keyboard where you can flick down on letters to get their alternate keys, which makes typing passwords way easier. Now on the iPhone, the trick with the keyboard is you can hold your finger down on the globe and shift the keyboard over to the right so it's easier to type with one hand if you're using a big phone like an iPhone 7 Plus. And I gotta tell you, I've barely scratched the surface on all the new stuff that's in here. So for example, if we look at settings, you may have noticed in other apps, but it's here too, there are big bold headers at the top of all the apps, which makes it easier to see where you are, I guess, but I just think it looks nice. And inside Safari, we can open the settings here, there's a new option to prevent cross-site tracking, which means that those ads aren't gonna be able to set a cookie to follow you around the web everywhere you go. Apple's actually using machine learning to do it. There's other stuff too. I really like the updates to Apple Music. It has those big bold headers, but Apple's trying again to do a little social thing here. You can see what your friends are listening to. The NFC chip on the back is no longer locked just to Apple Pay. Other apps can use it to read stuff. You can read QR codes with the camera. Uh, iMessage. iMessage has a ton of new stuff. You can get easier access to all the little apps. You start sliding over and they get really big so they're easier to find. Later on, you're going to be able to use Apple Pay to send money to your friends directly right inside iMessage. There's a new feature called iCloud Sync that syncs your iMessages better across multiple devices so you don't have to wait for them to update. That same iCloud Sync also works in photos. So when you identify a face on your iPhone, that same face shows up on your iPad. You don't have to do it twice. And all of that stuff is encrypted end to end in the cloud so that if the government asks Apple for it, Apple won't be able to do it because all the keys are local to your device so you know it's safe and encrypted. It's just, whew, it's a lot. <laughs> All right, so iOS 11 is coming out in the fall, and obviously you're gonna upgrade. Everybody always upgrades. But the question is, should you install the beta that's available to the public right now? And the answer is, I would wait. If you have an iPad, it's pretty solid there, and if it's not your main device, it's probably worth installing, actually. It's a lot of fun to play around with the new multitasking features. I really like it. But on your main iPhone, it's not quite ready yet. I've had some battery drain issues, I've had the phone get really hot, and there's a bunch of features that just aren't here yet, like Apple Pay. So it's okay to hold off on your phone. Install it on a secondary iPhone if you happen to have one. So there are just a ton of new features in iOS 11. I think that it does a better job than any version of iOS has ever done at making the case that the iPad can be your main computer. And I think that's really interesting. And on the iPhone, there's just a bunch of stuff that we've been asking for and even some stuff we didn't even know we wanted. It's really great. This is by far the most ambitious update to iOS 11 that I've seen in a very long time. Because it's nerdy, but it's super weird. No, start over. Now, I haven't even gotten to the part about iOS. 
You still good? Yeah. 